Good afternoon. I hope you're not all asleep from lunch. Um, so to ease you guys back into this, we're going to start it off with a little video to see why I'm here, why I'm talking to a bunch of education. I was actually supposed to talk during the education part of it, but got pulled out and ended up in the entrepreneur part, which is the reason I decided to come up, and my team of people came up with this. But here we go to give you a little idea of what I'm going to speak about today. Well, how did we get there? We got there with a good idea, and that's how a lot of businesses come to fruition. That's how a lot of businesses make money. Um, our idea was, how do we get, how do we advertise, how do we market, how do we get to other people, and also, how do we help something that desperately needed help? Well, education's near and dear to my heart due to the fact that both of my parents graduated from this great university. Uh, my mother got her master's of special education in 1975, went on to teach special education here in town at Dilworth Middle School. I was born the next year in 1976, and we set roots in Reno. My parents both came from out of town but ended up going to school here. My father uh, also had a degree. He was actually in juvenile, juvenile um, probation. Believe it or not, you all have seen him on the TV. I'm some, most of you know. Probably would never guess that's how he started. But he got involved with kids. Kids was always very near and dear to his heart. Well, they asked him to carry a gun at one point, and he didn't want to go down that path. So he decided to use his mouth and his charming good looks and everything else that he had, and he got into the insurance business. So in the insurance business, <laughs> he decided to grow the business, and he had three offices down in Sacramento, was commuting back and forth, and co coincidentally sold insurance to his college roommate, Don Ware, who is an also an auto dealer here, dealer here in town. The father that owned the dealership pulled him inside and said, if you can sell me this much insurance, I want to get you in the car business. He said, okay, what do I need to do? He said, well, you show down, showed up down in Carson City. They had three dealerships at that time, Reno, Tahoe, and Carson City. He went down there, subsequently figured out this was the business for him, ended up running Reno Dodge, general manager, and then Toyota came to him and asked him to come there. During this time I was growing up, education was uh, very important, like I said, to our family. It was a prerequisite. It wasn't an option. My mom made it very clear that we were all going to go to higher education to college. So much that I remember that when I was standing in my high school graduation, 
and everybody does the ceremonial, throw the caps up in the air. I looked at one of my best friends, who's now an ER doctor here in town, and I said, what is everybody so excited for? We're just starting school again in three months. <laughs> he said, I know, and I got like eight, because he wanted to be a doctor the whole time. I said, well, I don't think I'm going to make eight, but I know I got four more. So, so I went on, and, um, but as I grew up, I noticed that as a community, you have to be one with business, and business is a vessel that can take you places. Business can help a community. I was always involved in sports very heavily, so were my siblings, and I always noticed that everybody always would call my dad when they needed money, they needed vans to support, they needed everything like that. So as I went on, and my dad made it really clear, he never pressured me to get in the car business, I never thought I would. I wasn't going to be a car guy. I was going to go do something more important in life. So I ended up playing baseball, because that was ma what made me happy. I ended up at a junior college, and I unfortunately, the summer after my freshman year, I unfortunately snapped my leg in half on a jet ski accident up in uh, Tahoe. So I was in a hospital bed for two months. Um, nothing like some of the other speakers are going to talk about, but it was a life-changing experience for me. It's when I had to realize that what am I going to do in life? I'm not just going to pick up a, a mitt and go play baseball. I'm actually going to have to think about this. I'm actually going to have to start focusing in class. I'm actually going to have to start thinking about what I'm going to do after I graduate. So I ended up down at UC San Diego for a year, and then I ultimately ended at Arizona State. That was my first life-changing, was breaking my leg. The second one's not so serious. It was actually, I was kind of finding my way, not knowing what I was going to do. And I ended up in a calculus class at Arizona State. I'll never forget it. It was a spring afternoon. Arizona State was a tough class to go to school because it's very nice weather there. And the only reason I didn't go to UNR is because my dad had such a recognition in this town that he said, you're pretty much leaving town to go grow up and figure out because I don't want to know everything that you do in town. I said, all right. So, so I left. And I was sitting in a calculus class. I'll never forget it. Walked in, sat down. And I'm watching the professor. And I was a little late. And I looked over at the guy on the football team. And I said, uh, what's he doing up there? He said, he's working a car deal. I said, he's working a car deal. I s and I'll never forget, I sat there and I was sitting there going, if my dad was sitting right next to me right now and I asked him the same question and he'd given me the same response I just gave this guy. What's he doing up there? So I realized at that point, there was a reason my parents made me get higher education. And not only just what you learn in classes or what you do, it was that point that it made me realize that I needed to give the family business a chance. I needed to come home, I needed to do something different with my life, and I needed to figure out a way to do it. I had a grand opportunity, so I called my dad up and I said, I need to make a meeting with you. Flew home, said, I'm, this is what I'm going to do. These are my, I'll be graduating in the next two years. Came home, um, and I started, like they said, detailing cars. Worked my way up, worked through all the jobs, that taught me a lot of things, obviously, to deal with people, customers, their, per, their prerogative, where they're coming from. But it was during this time that I, then I became a, uh, the general manager. And there was this little thing called the Toyota Recall that I'm sure some of you guys remember. How I found out about that is I actually got a phone call from the newspaper. I was in my car, had no idea this was happening. Everybody thought we were all debriefed on this. And said, uh, how are you going to respond to this recall of 13 of your vehicles? I said, what are you talking about? So I figured that out, and that's crisis management. Got everybody together, and you just learned to get through that. Then there was this thing called the tsunami. The tsunami came, and I had to get through that. Well, during all this, the downturn in the economics and everything that happened in Reno and across the world, there was a lot of other things going on. Education was getting hit, and everything else was happening in the world. So I said, you know, and then there was this real big thing called social media that I couldn't believe. So we had to reposition ourselves as a business. We had to evolve. And I think as a business, you always have to evolve. So we evolved, and we came to this idea that all of a sudden I'm sitting there in 2011, and instead of worrying about TRPs on the advertising or radio or frequencies and all that stuff, I had to worry about how many friends I had on Facebook. Really? I was always taught you could count what? Your best five friends on your hand, you'll be all right? Now I got to try to figure out how to get 30,000 fans, friends, likes, 
whatever you want to call them. So we decided, I, I, I took this from, I sat down in the, in the meeting, and I said, well, I know there's one way you can get to everybody, and that's children. I said, they talk, they tell everybody, they'll tell, tell their mom, they'll tell their dads, they'll tell their parents, and are you ever going to say no to a kid? Really, you saw some of these kids up here. You going to say no to Logan? Veronica, she's not going to stop. <laughs> she told you right away, right? So I said, well, why don't we do this? There's budget crunches and there's everything going on in the world. Why don't we give money to the schools? Just give them money. And then everybody looked at me and goes, it's down in the economy. We're not making as much money. I said, who cares? Let's give it to the schools. They need it. And I didn't want to just give it to a district. I wanted to go straight to the source. So I decided to go straight to the source, and I decided that we were going to give $2,500 checks to 20 different classrooms, which meant that they also had to learn in life that there are winners and losers, which I don't think society does a good job of that nowadays. Because all we do is teach. You ever seen a kid after a soccer game? Nowadays, you ask them, oh, we tied. The kid knows they didn't tie. Okay, the kid can tell you the score and everything else. So I said, let's come up with a project. Let's get the good teachers and everybody else involved and send us in our, um, our projects. We'll put it on Facebook. You want people to like our page? The kids are going to go home. What are they going to do? They're going to tell their parents, their grandparents, their uncles, their neighbors, and everybody else to vote for their class. So we decided to do that. We wrapped it all up. And it was a huge success. We started in 2011 in June. I think we had zero fans, likes, friends, whatever you want to call them. At this point, after two years and two projects, we're at 30,000 fans. Does that equal business? I don't know. But what it does do is it teaches a generation of kids that are soon going to be the people that we need to hire, the people that are going to buy the cars, the people that are going to drive the society, and the people that are going to drive the community to do better. And maybe when they grow up, they might remember me and come buy a car from us. We hope that. That's why we did it as a business. But it became so much more. When, we, when I decided to do it, we came up with the idea to hand out the big checks. So I personally went to every school. I went and met with all the kids. If you ever gather a kid with a bunch of kids is like you guys are gathered here, you really want some questions, go there. They're not afraid to ask. I think my favorite one was, how many banks did you have to rob to give this money out? <laughs> I, I, I said no, and I had to tell him, you know, but it, I think maybe I got to him. I said, it's just a lot of hard work, and it takes your employees, it takes your uh, community, and it takes the people that buy the cars and whatever business you're in, it takes them to do what you do. So after we did all that... Um, <laughs> We went out, and like I said, we did that, and then we did the class project where we give $10,000 to an um, elementary school, middle school, and a high school for a project to upgrade their school. All I'm trying to say in short is that if you have a strong community, you have a strong school system, you have a strong business world, our community will survive almost anything. And I think it all starts with kids. I think that's one of the main things of today is they are innocent. They do have dreams. And we're not the ones to squelch them. We're not the ones to put them down. I wish we all had that same dream-like mentality. So in ending, all I have to say is, a wise man once told me, the more I give, the luckier I get. Well, <clears throat> I like to change it. The more I give, the more successful in life, and the more successful in business. And Dad, I don't think luck has anything to do with it. So thank you. <laughs>